Good evening, fellow Sky Watchers. This is Kaz at UFO Watch. I have with me Fritz, my Hello. trusty technician. Dials and digits man. He's a numbers man. Oh, let me tell you what we're doing, Fritz. We are watching the skies because they are active. They are alive, those skies. Not only gases, burning gases, things kind of you know floating around, but unidentified things. Things that you wouldn't even know about, that I don't know about, that no one knows about, but we see them. And we want to know more about them. Uh, so Absolutely. Let's take a deeper dive. So when I, when I'm going to describe to you where this place is, and then I want on the telescope for you to like zoom in on that place so we can take a look and see like what's going on there. All right. Okay. So this is uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina. You got that on the uh, <clears throat> the old GPS? Can you pull that up? Uh, I do now. Wake, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Give us a little peep over there. See what they're looking at. The uh, temperate okay. climate looks like right. They got a nice area over there. It's it's super nice. Wake That's Forest. a nice area. There's a college up there. It's a nice area. Um, but on September 28th, at about 10.10 10 p.m., a witness outside of there experienced something that uh, was a little disconcerting to them. Let's not call it not nice, but it was unidentified. Um, the quote from uh, the this, this story that I'm reading off of the MUFON website by reporter Roger Marsh uh, was, I live in a rural area approximately 20 miles northeast of Raleigh, North Carolina, near the town of Wake Forest. My daughter had been over for dinner, and as she was getting ready to leave, I escorted her outside to the car. We were standing outside carrying on a conversation when, in the distance, I heard the approaching sound of a helicopter. As I looked towards the sound, I see the lights of the helicopter approaching. And by the way, they were blue, which a little weird, I guess, right? Like helicopter, especially if it's striking you. I see helicopters all the time, so it's not really a big deal, but we live in kind of like a relatively metropolitan area. Um, so blue lights on this helicopter is coming ra- relatively quickly. Uh, the woman goes on to say, sometimes objects appear farther away than they might initially appear, but I could clearly see the helicopter and it was facing broadside to me as, as we were watching it. And at this point, the helicopter was hovering, I'd say maybe for about 20 seconds or so. And then it began to turn to the right. That's towards- a long time then for a UFO sighting. Right. 20, also, just for a helicopter to kind of be hanging out with blue lights in, in an area that you're not accustomed to it, I'd already like be weirded out by this. So the helicopter turns to, to her towards the position and begins to accelerate rapidly, the witness says. Uh, also seemed to be one of the large twin rotor aircrafts. Remember we talked about that before? Oh, yeah. Remember we talked about this on uh, episode 25, the the realtor, the kegger, and man daddy, when I, t- I talked about the Cash Landry incident. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That is on our full-length episode of Fort Fritz with the full cast, uh, full sound beds, full sound effects, uh, fantastic program. You should check it out. Lovely, lovely people. So, yeah, they're using, like, the big stuff, the good stuff, right? This isn't, like, a traffic copter or something like, you know, the cops chasing, like, a perp or whatever. Something something cool is happening when they get the, the twin rotor helicopter out. Um, my sense was that it was military. This goes on to quote the woman. And I could plainly see that the blue lights uh, before, on the fore and aft of the helicopter. And I like how this woman is using broadside and fore and aft. Like, she's very technical with her helicopter uh, positioning terms. Where are you reading the story from? Uh, this would be MUFON.com in the news section under uh, the article is titled Military Helicopter Reported Chasing Massive Object. And this was on uh, September 28th, 2017. So last year uh, around the fall. But I, I found this significant because, again, once you get the military involved, once you get anyone willing to spend a significant amount of money to engage military vehicles, personnel, training, etc. Something is going on that is outside the realm of your normal whatever. Even like crazy stuff that happens in your city, right? Like a bank robbery or something, you know, even kidnappings. They don't call the military. They don't call, you know, they, they call the cops. They call whatever, the SWAT team. Once a, a military person is involved, something way more expensive is happening. At least, you know, in my, in my learned experience... Uh, reading all these articles on the internet on my phone. So <clears throat> uh, the woman goes on to say she could clearly see the fore and aft lights on the helicopter, which, again, very uh, astute observations later. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, as they were watching it, um, it was flying extremely fast. It was it was not sort of leisurely moving. This is one of the large twin rotor helicopters gunning it moving forward and as they say she uh, uh she, she goes on to say that she exclaimed to her daughter that helicopter is chasing something it must be uh at that point she saw what looked like a yellow round faintly glowing what? orb bail away out in front of the helicopter as if though it was trying to catch up the helicopter was trying to catch up to it 
So this military, what one could only assume would be a mil, a military helicopter was chasing this other UFO or this thing, this this light source in the sky, and these two women happen to be standing outside in their front yard. So if it was a light source, it wouldn't necessarily be a UFO, right? It would be something else. Uh, right. I guess that would be uh, an unidentified aerial phenomenon. For is what you're referring. So to. what is that? A uh, UAP. A UAP. A UAP. So that's pretty much when it's not like a an aircraft, right? Well, because like like Northern Lights could be exactly. Well, it's not unidentified. I guess that's identified. It would be right if if an aircraft. If we could say that has things that propel it through the sky, mm. and we, sometimes it's a gas or a light or just a weird you know twinkle that you see. And and often I, I like that uh, Roger Marsh and the MUFON site does go on to say chiefly UFO UAP sightings are natural occurring events that are. Misunderstood, misinterpreted, but um, like I said, follow the money. <clears throat> like I said, follow the money, right? Like if if something is being engaged by the military, someone is weirded out by it. That yeah. has more clearance than we do. Yeah, for sure. And and more access to radar and technology and things like that. So I think that that to me is like kind of an, uh, when I see those the Chilean military, the different uh, you know those different or- military organizations talking about UFOs. That to me is like a. a a key that something cool and something, you know, otherworldly or at least outside the realm of our understanding is happening. So Wake Forest, keep keep your eye on the sky and Fritz uh, go ahead and pull the telescope back in because it's going to rain and we're going to need to uh, batten down the hatches at the fort, but good talk and we will see you guys next time. 